Hey Thumpers, welcome back to another film review from Hyper RPG. Today, we are doing a non-spoiler review of Spider-Man Homecoming. You and I got mm -hmm. to see it early. You saw it tonight. I saw it tonight. I saw it last night. Yep. And, and uh, uh, I've been itching to talk about this with somebody. Yeah, um, I actually worked on the movie, did a little bit of the, of the visual effects for this the guy. first third of the movie. This guy. Uh, I was afraid. I saw the first third of the movie and I was afraid. I was like, oh, did I just see the best parts? Mm. Uh, I'm glad that I, <laughs> I I came to the realization that I did not see the best yeah. parts. This movie, uh, it, it, it blew all my expectations out of the water. Mm -hmm. I, I was coming in kind of tired of Spider-Man, uh, feeling like Spider-Man has been a character that's been pushed to the side for so long when he's such a good character. And I feel like, what's the name? John Watts? John, John Watts, John yeah. Watts. He came in with, in with some heat. He came in with some really, 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 really good stuff with this movie. Mm. What did you think about it? Um, again, this is a non-spoiler review, so we're going to talk about you know very limited things. We will do a, a spoiler mm -hmm, one on mm -hmm, Friday. Mm -hmm, Hector mm -hmm. will be here to talk about that. Um, but I will say, I kind of... I don't want to say I was apprehensive about this movie because... From Marvel Studios track record, for the most part, their movies have been really solid. And the fact that Sony, which despite its flaws, Sony does make really great, great movies. With the Spider-Man, with Spider-Man, ever since Spider-Man 3, they've had a hard time really getting it right. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I like Amazing Spider-Man 1, but Amazing Spider-Man 2 to me was just just a moneymaker for them to build up this universe. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I feel like because they have Marvel Studios uh, in their back pocket... Kevin Feige was able to ha help them take a step back yeah. and realize this character is one of the most recognizable characters in the world. Um, he's right. I think he's right below Superman. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think coming from Marvel Studios, they have a bit more of a realization of we need to treat this character with a little more care, a little more love. Right. And let's right. focus on really him. Peter Parker, Spider-Man what being Spider-Man really means to him, mm -hmm, what it means mm -hmm. to us who are fans of the character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let's really focus on him being a high school student, a sophomore in high school, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and, and kind of what sort of life he lives. Because I feel like in the previous Spider-Man movies, his high school experience has kind of been thrown to the side. Absolutely. He's in high school for maybe one to half a movie, half to like one full movie, and then he's in college. And it's like, but what about the Spider-Man that like we know from the comics what, where he premiered as this young yeah. kid? What about the nervous little kid? What about the kid right. who has homework to do? What about the kid who still thinks his aunt can stop him from doing things? Exactly. Like, what about that kid? Because yeah. we can all relate to that kid because we were all that kid at one point. Exactly. And, and the other thing, too, is like I, I've heard not, not a lot, but I've heard a couple people say like, well, I feel like this movie maybe would have benefited more from having an origin story. And as we know, this movie is not an origin story. Mm -hmm. He has already been Spider-Man for quite a few, for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, because, you know, we saw him, he premiered in Civil War. He had already been Spider-Man for a few months. Um, but I honestly, and this is obviously not a spoiler because th this is all, all known, I did not miss it. It is referenced to, it is mentioned um, by, by Peter Parker to multiple characters. Mm -hmm. There's also references, subtle references to Uncle Ben and Aunt May's kind of the position that she is in now mm -hmm. that Uncle Ben is gone. There's so a I, reference by Ned about the radioactive spider. Yeah. So like I, there's everything. Exactly. So I feel like they really covered the bases that needed to be covered in order right. for us to really understand. Right. Okay. Bitten by a spider. Uncle died. We're done. Let's move into mm -hmm, the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like because they kind of went that route, it allowed them to really focus on Peter Parker as a high school student and the characters that surround him. Mm -hmm. um, Flash Thompson, obviously Ned, Liz, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. and some of the other sporting characters. We it, and we get to spend a lot more time in the school. Yeah. Hannibal yeah. Buress is in there, and he's... Hannibal's the best. Hilarious. He, is, Martin he doesn't Star. even say much. No, he doesn't even <laughs> say the much. Best, yeah. And I was pleasantly surprised with how much Iron Man was in this movie. I was yeah. one of the people yeah. who was like, please don't put a lot of Iron Man. I want this to be a Spider-Man movie. Yeah. I feel like Iron Man was sprinkled throughout this movie in the right places when he needed to be present and have an impact on Spider-Man. Right, he was right. present. And that I think was the, uh, one of the biggest things that I was the most scared of was please don't overuse. If that you character. read the, which weren't very popular, but if you read the civil war run of comics of, of like when, when Peter Parker sided with Iron Man in the first civil war series, that's how Iron Man pops into a story. Mm -hmm. He's there when he needs to be. He's not overbearing. Yeah. And he doesn't take over the story. And that's, I'm, I'm with you. I was afraid that Tony Stark, this was going to be like, Tony Stark, oh, and Spider-Man happens to be in there. Right. You know? Right. But they really, the way they, the way they really focused on Peter was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think, 
We we gotta we gotta talk about Tom, dude. Tom Holland was Tom Holland. Great. Everybody in the theater was absolutely in love with him yeah. by the end of this movie and 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 i don't blame anybody like i was yeah i thought i was already in love with the guy you know already <laughs> before and just from civil war but seeing him act his ass off in this movie first mm. of all he did really well there was a lot of it was fairly light-hearted um problems and issues and things like that he mainly seemed like a nervous kid mm. but there were some moments when he really had to push his acting where i was like oh shit this kid can act yeah and he really had it going and he had me going uh and i think he he shines but we also have to talk about ned what's yeah. the kid's name jacob Batalon. yeah he was that kid, great as ned phenomenal i and, and it's funny because he's a character that he has been in the trailers we've seen little comedic bits and moments from him but i was really surprised of how good he was yes and how hard his humor hits and yes. sometimes it's unintentional right but because he plays it so well and because he's directed so well by right. john watts he nails it right you know there and there are like there are more subtle moments that we won't get into the non-spoilers but there are certain moments where he this character shows up at the right time and you're like man this, you you you, you, you want this kid him. to be your best friend yeah you root for him yeah. you want him to be on your side totally. no matter what yeah. his, his comedy hits his acting hits i think they 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 scripted him and they had him sort of as the sidekick character, but at the same time he felt like so in the much best way possible. Yeah, kind of so like. much more than a sidekick. Yeah, you know, like he was there and he deeply cared about yeah. Peter and he deeply cared about the situation and he nerded out just like we did. Totally. You know, like if Peter was my best friend, yeah, I've related to him because I would totally. be asking him the same. There, there's one scene and I won't give it too much away, but there is one scene where he has to be a bug in Spider Man's ear. Yeah, and it is hilarious. So good, so it's good, so great. Yeah. Um. I mean, just this entire cast was just so well. Yeah, first of all, it was yeah. well cast, but second of all, it was so well performed. Michael Keaton as the Vulture, the oh. Lord. I, I, oh. I, I saw this on the internet. I think it's the best explanation of Michael Keaton. He's the Lord of the Wings, Batman, Birdman, Vulture. I mean, oh, he's, shit, he he's great. He's really, really great. The movie. I mean, we kind of know the the basic premise of who he is. He's a guy who basically is not a junker, but he is somebody who has to go in and whenever the Avengers have a great battle. He's, he's basically the clean, cleanup crew. Yes. He has to go yes. in. He has to salvage all this stuff. And as we know from the first Avengers movie, it's all Chitauri mm -hmm, technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What the sort of events that take place that force him to go the route that he goes. Right. But it's played in a... He, the character does have a nice arc, I feel like. I feel like you, yes. you are sympathetic to the character even though... You do. You obviously realize, like, you're a bad guy. He's a bad but I guy. Understand why you're doing what you're doing, which right. is different from what we get from a lot of other Marvel character, uh, Marvel mm -hmm. villains. Mm -hmm. Aside mm -hmm. from maybe like Loki, maybe um, Obadiah, Obadiah from the first Iron Man movie. Mm -hmm. We all know that Marvel has had a pretty, pretty decent villain problem where a lot of the villains are right. not built up. Right. I feel like finally with Vulture, we got someone who we got to know, you know, what their role was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm how that role had kind of evolved since the first Avengers movie right. and what kind of led them on the route that, 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 that basically are on. Right. And not only that, every moment with him feels earned. Yeah. There was moments where I was like, ah, uh, you know what? I can't say I wouldn't do the same thing you did yeah. in your shoes, yeah. you know, yeah. because there was situations where I really, really connected with him. Mm -hmm. And I would go as far enough to say that this is my fault by far the best Marvel villain we've seen so far because he's fully fleshed out. Like he's well-written. He's, terrifying at my king can be pretty terrifying <laughs> and and mainly be and also because of of john watts direction mm -hmm. in that one scene in particular yeah where you're just like this is fucking tense <laughs> yeah. there it's it's just the 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 atmosphere is so thick yeah. and heavy because yeah. there's this big question that needs to be answered and and the way it's directed the way it's shot and then the conclusion to that scene I stood back and I and I told my friends I was like, "Holy shit, that was one of the best scenes I've seen in a mar in a in a superhero movie period." Yeah, it was really, really, really well done. Yeah, so I, I'm fully impressed. Yeah, and I, I think the big thing, and I think a lot of people know this because we come from a visual effects background. For me, it was always like, "How do the visuals look? How do they look?" Because I saw it in IMAX 3D, mm -hmm. um, and I'm always looking at the visuals like, "How does this feel? How does this look?" I will say that for the most part. The VFX were were pretty well done. We're really well. Yeah. I feel like Sony, because it's it is a Marvel production, but I feel like because Sony is kind of the one that's really financially involved, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. wanted to really have a nice polish on this movie. Yeah. This movie has a lot of action, a lot wow. more action than I was anticipating. 
Um, I thought there was going to be, you know, a- action set pieces that were going to be sprinkled throughout, but it's really like continuous. You go from a scene with Peter to a scene with Spider-Man to an action sequence, and it kind of like goes on this constant yep. journey. Yep. But they're done really, really well. They're done with a lot of care, and for the most part, they look really damn good. There was there was some good stuff. I have gripes on it only yeah. because I was able uh, since I worked on right. it, I was able to play a shot over and over and over again, and I was like. The animation on this sucks. Yeah. And if, honestly, the only way you'll notice it is if you're an into animation or are an animator, mm-hmm. because some of it honestly felt like like student animation. It does. It some, does. And then sometimes the suit feels a little too CG. It does. It's it does, just totally. way too polished. It, it, the the compositing is not mm-hmm. exactly right. There's yeah. just little bits. Colors are a little bit off between the background and, and the CG double. Yes, yeah. yes. But that being said, they pulled some stuff off really well. Totally. Um, and honestly, it's it's to the point where you forgive it. Yeah. Because you're so engrossed in the story. You're mm-hmm. so engrossed with Tom Holland, Spider-Man, that everything that they throw at you, you're like, that's cool. Totally, that's cool. I'll totally. Let it slide. I'll and let I mean, it slide. I, and I think because of the way the Rousseau brothers kind of set that character up, it's very minimal. It's not a whole lot. Yeah, He's in yeah. one major sequence. We yeah. see, we kind of see how that kind of ties itself together, and it's done very, very well. <laughs> um, but it was really impressive to see Tom Holland. Obviously, we knew that he was going to fully embrace this character. He is someone who grew up as a gymnast. He grew mm-hmm. up as a dancer. He has the physical qualities to play Spider-Man. He does all the flips. He does a lot of that on his own. Mm-hmm. But to really nail the personality and the charm and the wit and sort of the the emotion of that character. Right, right. I think Tobey Maguire was great. I think Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield played very different Spider-Men. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, they're a lot. They're they are not a lot, but they are supposed to be older and more mature. Right. Whereas right. this is like this is really a kid in a in a much more youthful. I don't want to say a kids movie because I think feel like that would be a disservice. It's definitely to the movie. not a kids movie. It's not a kids movie, no. but it is a lot more innocent in right. in ways than right. a lot of the other Marvel movies right. that tend to be because the characters are a little bit older. It yeah. plays towards a slightly more mature audience. Whereas this, you know, if you're if you are a high schooler. This is your John Hughes movie. Oh yeah, and I oh, love yeah. like there's little references in there to John Hughes movies yep. that I love. It was beautiful, it and was beautiful. and I think that's what's so cool about that. Even though it is a superhero movie, I, I said on 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 social media, I was like, it's one half one half a superhero movie, but it also is very much this John Hughesy teenage coming of age, age coming of age story. Yep. And I Absolutely. I love that about this, and I think that's how you differentiate the Spider Man not right. only from. The other five movies that have come before it, mm-hmm. but that's how you really set it apart from the other twenty some odd movies in the MCU. Absolutely. And somebody just asked us on Twitter, they're like, if you could say this, like out of all the five Spider Man movies, mm-hmm. this one is a combination of this and that. I'm like, this movie stands on its own. Yeah. It's not a combination of Toby's or Andrew Garfield's no, Spider Man because no. he's such a young kid. Right. And it is that coming of age story. And and it's it's unique. It completely stands on its own. Mm. And I think that's part of the reason why I liked it so much. Yeah. And also another reason why I really liked it was the humor. Yes. The humor did not feel forced. And and I feel like he's one character in the MCU who is allowed to have that the most. Exactly. Exactly. And what I like about the him it like kind of spreads to everybody else. Yes. So once Peter Parker starts being kind of silly, a little bit goofy, like he's just a kid who's just acting like a kid reacts yeah. when he's on the phone tab- talking to happy hogan's voicemail like telling him all the good deeds he's right, done right exactly when he's filming himself like hanging out with the avengers yeah. and he's just geeking out and he's like oh my god and then we did this and then we did yeah, that yeah, and then yeah. you know it's just it's funny he's a and it's a year old kid that's yeah. what that's how you would act that's how that's how i would act. Yeah. i'm fucking 33 <laughs> and that's how i would act but it it, it really makes me um really makes me appreciate the humor because coming off of guardians of the galaxy Mm. where i think the humor felt really forced uh and then coming from a a movie like wonder woman where the humor was there a little bit more subdued them fully accepting that it is kind of silly to be a teenager and you are going to have these crazy moments in which like yeah they're kind of messed up but you kind of have to laugh about it Mm. too so the movie i think was was a perfect blend of so many things action comedy seriousness emotion Lots of things, dude. And and when I left the theater and as I was watching it, I kept saying, I need to watch this again. Totally. I really, totally. really need to watch this movie again. And, and I, I, I really enjoy his relationship with Aunt May. Yep, I think yep. I would have liked maybe a little bit more with Aunt May. Um, but yeah. the moments that they do have, they are very strong. And you do get little hints towards 
kind of how she is feeling because of what happened with Uncle Ben. Yep. I think in the second movie that will be explored even further. Absolutely. For obvious reasons. Yep. Because um, of the last shot in the movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they'll definitely be be explored yeah, a lot more. Yeah, uh, yeah. But Marissa Tomei is great. She was fantastic. She's not hard to look at either. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, she's a good Bay. looking lady. She's a good looking lady. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, it, was, it was really cool to see these relationships in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and seeing kind of what repercussions the Avengers have on even Spider-Man's universe, yes. because yes. We, we, we wouldn't know what that would be like if, if Sony would be making these movies in their own universe. So absolutely, it was really cool to have Spider-Man back in the MCU. Absolutely. Um, I hope I cannot wait to see what happens with the sequel. I hope John Watts comes back. I hope we oh, build up the relationships yeah. even more. Oh, I think yeah. Peter and Ned are a great duo. Um, and I can't wait to see what other Avengers cameo only if it's in the same capacity as iron man if exactly. they need to if only if, if they, they need, need to be to. i was afraid that they would show other avengers and i'm like man this which they do oh yeah in a different but in a yeah, different context true. in that's a true. funny context that's true they and do. it worked perfectly yeah it, yeah you're right you're right yeah. it worked really yeah. well but you guys got to watch it you do also stick around uh there's a beginning end credit scene and yes. then there's an end end credit scene yes the uh, end end credit scene is it's perfection it's absolute perfection. Uh, we also can, got to talk about Hannibal Burris. Oh man, Hannibal Burris, yeah. silent but fucking silent but pungent, deadly in the best pungent, way. Pungent, yeah. pungent, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I was the only one. He came up on screen. I was like, "Hey, that's Hannibal!" Yeah. Out loud, and everybody looked at me, and they're like, "Yep, that's." That's Hannibal. the cool thing is like they yeah. sprinkled some actors throughout this movie. Oh, some, Donald Glover. Yeah, like some of some Shit. of the roles are are smaller, but there is so much. In store for them in the future that we can't talk about. Donald Glover gave us a nice little tidbit. He's like, oh, there you go. Yeah. I'll just drop that little uh, bomb right num, 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 num. Just chew it up. Just that little tasty uh, nugget. Super exciting. But yeah. before we get into spoiler yeah, territory, we should cut this off. Uh, make off. sure you guys come back on Friday. We will be doing a spoiler review of Spider-Man Homecoming. It'll be uh, us two. We'll also be joined by Hector and maybe a few other people who end up watching oh, the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a really, really good time. But if you have seen the movie, let us know in the comments below. Spoiler free. Mm -hmm. what you thought about the movie give us your general thoughts and maybe mm -hmm. a favorite moment or two as long as it's not spoiler related and then ne next week we will get into the nitty-gritty i do have some i do have a couple a couple grabs for the movie but if i get into it here it That's will be spoiler spoilers territory, so yeah. we will save yeah. that for now but yeah. in the meantime spider-man homecoming is great make sure you check it out come yeah. back for our spoiler review next week and uh we'll see you then go watch it bye